Okay, chemistry students, today you're going to learn about chemical and physical properties. So, chemical properties describe the ability of a substance to undergo changes that transform it into a different substance. Some sort of chemical reaction must be performed in order to observe these properties. Some examples. The ability to explode. Flammability. Ability to react with an acid. Ability to react with a base. Ability to react with water to rust, and to tarnish. Any of those, it, once those things happen, once it tarnishes, it changes into a new substance. Physical properties describe the substance. They can be observed or measured without altering the chemical identity of the substance. We have two types of physical properties. We have extensive physical properties and intensive physical properties. Extensive is dependent on the amount of substance. It's usually a number. It cannot be used to identify a substance. An example would be the mass of something. Uh, if I said we had 24 grams of gold, that would be an extensive physical property because it tells us it depends on how much. 24 grams depends on how much of it is. Intensive is not dependent on the amount and it can be used to identify a substance. So if I said I had um, 12 grams of gold, that would be an extensive physical property. So if I said I had 12 grams of gold, that would be an extensive physical property. So if I said I had 12 grams of gold, <clears throat> the density of a substance does not change, so density is an intensive property. No matter how much or little you have, it does not depend on how much of a substance you have. Okay, I'd like you to pause the video and do example two. All right, check your answers here. If you notice that mass mass and volume are the only extensive properties here, these are the only ones that depend on mass. Length and area over here are the only extensive properties. They're the only ones that depend on the mass. If you have any questions, uh, let me know next class. Okay, physical and chemical changes. Physical changes do not change the identity of a substance. Changes of states are considered to be physical changes. Many physical changes are reversible, but not all of them are. Reversible means it can be changed back into its other state. Irreversible means it cannot be changed back. Chemical changes transform one or more substance into new different substances. They involve some sort of reaction taking place. So how do we know if it's a chemical change? Well, here are some indicators of chemical changes. An unexpected change in heat energy, if it gets hot or if it gets cold. A gas is produced, so if you see bubbles, a gas is being produced. An unexpected color change. An example of that would not be painting your walls, but if you added a penny into some acid and it started to turn green. A solid is produced or a precipitate. It gets cloudy. An unexpected apparent mass change means that a gas was involved. This should not say F. This should say F. And this should say G. Sorry about that. A new odor is formed like a spoiling garbage. Or a light is produced. For example, fire or a glow stick. Now I'd like for you to pause the video and do example three that's next to the physical and chemical changes in your notes. Check your answer. If you notice here, chewing and stomach churning are both physical, the rest are chemical. If it says breakdown, that's definitely chemical or reaction. 